Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here and share with you uh, some of the work that we are doing on food safety uh, around the world and in China in particular. I, I want to thank Richard Lester for inviting me to be part of this uh, session and even more so that he was thoughtful enough that to let me speak about food safety after lunch. And so, <laughs> so food safety is a global problem. Uh, it's a challenge that concerns every government and every society in the world. It's actually not only global, it's personal. It's only something that affects each one of us, our families. And as a public, we are periodically exposed to major food incidents that sicken many people and sometimes even cause death. Moreover, these incidents damage severely the trust that we have in food systems and often have tremendous economic consequences. But food safety has other angles that are less visible to the public, but nevertheless uh, pose significant and substantial challenges to governments and regulators. And let me share with you two facts that will illustrate that challenge. In the US, the US FDA has every year to manage over 40 million unique shipments of food products and decide for each one of them whether it's safe to bring it into the country. Currently, we have the ability to sample 1% of these 40 million shipments. In China, a huge country, the government has to manage thousands of incidents every year. This is really a complex global problem. In the previous slide, I showed two incidents. The first one, was a recent foodborne Ill uh, illness outbreak that we had in one of the most popular restaurant chains in the US. We classify that as an unintentional unint adulteration, something that often stems from negligence, sometimes gross negligence. The other extreme is an attack that is motivated by terror on the food systems. Unfortunately, that's also a threat that we have to consider. The second example that I showed was the very well-known melamine case in China where farmers and collectors in the milk supply chain added a chemical, a poisonous chemical to the milk to increase the perceived protein le uh, levels and caused injuries and death to thousands of babies in China. We call that economically motivated adulteration, where there is an intentional adulteration of the food with the expectation of gaining economic benefits. Economically motivated adulteration is particularly challenging because it really requires the understanding of technical issues together with socioeconomic dynamics, environmental factors, cultural factors of the underlying food supply chains. Our team believe that food systems have multiple unique attributes that really call for different regulatory approaches, uh, perhaps fundamentally different than what is currently practiced in the pharmaceutical industries. To start with, unlike pharmaceutical uh, products, in food, we don't have a stringent formula that tells us what to expect from the final product. Think about how many recipes you know for chicken soup. That makes merely testing final products not very effective. Secondly, the underlying supply chains of food are very complex. This is particularly true to countries like China that are based on family farms, millions of them, in a very fragmented way, but not only for China. And moreover, these supply chains are opaque. We don't have transparency to those supply chains. And finally, the range of other trends that can penetrate the supply chain is absolutely huge. We believe that we have to address at least two gaps to be able to manage those types of risks in a much more systematic, proactive way. The first is to better understand food supply chains, particularly these opaque upstream parts of the supply chain. Understand the structure, understand their commercial dynamics, understand their socioeconomic environments and regulatory environments, understand 
environmental factors. Leverage that to understand what makes supply chains risky or less risky, and use advanced analytics and artificial intelligence to develop far more predictive and prescriptive approaches to manage risks of food alteration. The second gap that we think we have to address is to fundamentally change the economics of testing food. Each test currently, when you test a food, has to be targeted to a predefined unique other trend and has to rely on either very expensive and slow lab settings or rapid key testings, tests that are often so inaccurate that they do not provide any actionable signal. Our team is developing a new generation of testing capabilities that will hopefully bring a field-based platform that can multiplex in one test the detection of up to 100 aldotrans in an accuracy that is matching or at least close to matching lab quality testing. The combination of analytics and new testing technologies, we believe is the base to develop monitoring approaches that allow us to test for many more aldotrans much more frequently and, frequently and dynamically over time and in many more locations in the supply chain and really uh, create proactive risk management of food adulteration. I have to uh, thank and feel fortunate to be really part of a very unique collaboration. First of all, we have a unique group at MIT. Uh, we have faculty and students from three different schools in the university. The School of Sciences, the School of Engineering, and the School of Management. But maybe more exciting, we have established an on-the-ground collaboration with four different companies and institutions in China that have never worked together before they started to work on this project with MIT. Zhejiang University, the Business Management College uh, in Beijing, Ice of Stone, a company that was founded by uh, MIT alums, and at the end, and finally, ASTT, a lab and a research institute in Shanghai. I want to thank all of my collaborators that are currently in the audience for being uh, uh, part of this very exciting journey. Just to make the point, this is research that is being done on the ground in China. We have research meetings in China. We are touring wholesale markets in China. We present the work in China. And I'm very, very proud of this. Let me now tell you a little bit about the work that we've been doing and give you a glimpse of some of the things that we have accomplished so far. The China FDA, that by the way is currently being reformed to a different organization, posts on a regular basis tests of food products on public websites. Unfortunately, these tests are currently being posted on 400 different websites. The central FDA website, each province has a website, and each prefecture in China has a website. The data on each one of these websites is stored on different formats and is not being integrated and does not allow any systematic analysis. Together with our collaborators, we have uh, built, using machine learning and extensive uh, text analytics, the ability to, in an automated way, to take the data from all of these 400 websites and integrate it into one database. And moreover, we took a lot of the unstructured data that currently resides on these uh, websites and we are now able to structure it and answer new questions. Where tests are being uh, conducted? What other trends are being found? How policy is being enforced? This is really a huge effort. We currently uh, are able to integrate two million different test results from 75,000 different files that have 15,000 different formats. Let's see what you can actually do with that. So this is, speaking about complex supply chain, this is a simplified 
a diagram of the freshwater aquatic supply chain in China, starting from the farms on the left, going through a very complex network of brokers, uh, through large wholesale markets, up to retailers and restaurants and consumers. Currently, the policy in China is emphasizing extensive testing in retailer stores. What we've done with the data that we have, with additional analysis of where each other trend is likely to be introduced in the supply chain, we are able now, in an automated way, to tell you for each test that failed in a retailer store, what is the likely source in the supply chain that introduced that other trend. So what you see here tells you that if I look on all the problems detected in retailer stores, 8% of them came from things that are likely to be penetrating the supply chain from the environment. About 40% of them penetrate the supply chain from farms, and about 46% of them from manufacturing, and finally, 7% from the circulation part of the supply chain. What do we learn from that? What are the insights? Well, the first insight is that perhaps there is an opportunity to use analytics and shift testing resources from retailer stores to where is the source of the problem is in the supply chain. We are able to demonstrate that by doing that, we are likely to find more problems and fix them at the source. So that's one insight. But there is even a more strategic insight about this supply chain. This supply chain is actually quite unique. You will not see that, that kind of a supply chain in the US. And one of the things that is interesting about this supply chain that it has a very clear consolidation point, specifically these large wholesale markets. You have millions of farms. You have millions of retailer stores in China. But you only have about 5,000 large wholesale markets that consolidate about 80% of the supply of fresh aquatic products and many, many other important product categories. We believe that this should be a focus area to be able to monitor and create transparency in the supply chain. Well, that's not that easy. There are challenges to monitor supply, uh, wholesale markets, particularly the challenge of the logistical conditions and the fact that food moves very, very fast throughout the wholesale market. However, we believe that with the rapid testing technology that we develop and with the analytics capabilities that we develop, there is a hope to be able to create and pilot a new techno-operational concept and approach to focus on horses markets, create transparency through them, and monitor a lot of the food in the supply chain in a very effective way. And at the same time, leverage that point to actually increase the welfare of farmers in China. We are very excited about uh, all of this uh, work. We, it has been a long journey, and we know that it's going to be a far longer journey. But we are passionate and hopeful that you will join us in this long journey so we can together, Chinese and Americans, work hard to make our food system better and make the world better. Thank you very much. <laughs>